Hey everybody, Ruan here from Tunnel Vision TV and today I'm just going to talk a bit about Rayfire, the destruction plugin for 3ds Max. In some of my other videos I actually used Rayfire and in this tutorial I really just want to go over some of the basics. So here we are in 3ds Max, I'm using version 2012 and I'm just going to show you guys the basic uses obviously of Rayfire. So first of all I'm just going to create a plane let's just rename it to floor okay next up I'm just gonna create a box there we go and then I'm gonna create a sphere maybe something like that and I'm just gonna line it up so for this tutorial I'm gonna create a box and shatter that using ray fire and the sphere will go through the box and that will be the cause of the destruction and then the plane will just act as a floor where all the pieces will fall onto so first of all let's just make this floor a little bit bigger there we go and then under your standard primitives I'm gonna go down to ray fire click on that and then click ray fire and then click open ray fire floater now what you need to do here is under the dynamic and impact objects that's the object that's going to get shattered so I'm going to select the box and I'm going to click add and if we go down to static and kinetic objects I'm going to add the sphere and I'm also going to add the floor and then we can go to fragmentation now this is the fragmentation for the object that was added under the dynamic or impact objects so in this case it's the box so we go to fragmentation and I'm going to select this one here, not sure how to pronounce that. And these settings will actually just change the way that the fragmentation is happening. So you can play around with that and see what different kinds of fragmentations you get. And we're going to click on fragment impact objects. And you're going to see it's creating all these cuts on the object. To see it a bit better, click on realistic and just go to edged faces. And now you can just see the faces a little bit better. Okay, the next step is to add an animation for the sphere so that it actually will go through the wall. So I'm just going to minimize that. And I'm going to click on auto key at the bottom to just add an animation to the sphere. And we're going to go to say frame 50 or let's make it frame 30. And just move the sphere through the wall. And now we should have a little animation. Okay, I'm going to go back to the ray fire window. And I'm going to go to physics and click on the preview button. There we go. Now, as you can see, the wall actually started to animate before the ball actually hit it. Let me just show you that again. See, there you can see it's animating and then the ball goes through it. Now, you don't always want that. So what we're going to be using is a thing called sleeping objects. So I'm going to click on the objects tab and at the top where it says the dynamic impact objects you can see it actually created all these fragments for this box object. I'm just going to click on menu and then send to sleeping list and this will send it to a list at the bottom called sleeping objects and what it will do it will wait for something to impact before it will start the physics simulation. So if we go back to physics and we click on preview you'll see the ball will impact first and then the physics simulation will start which is what we want now if you're happy with your animation you can just click on the second button which will bake your animation and will save all the all the animation for all these objects okay once that's done you can close ray fire and you can see that your animation has been saved and you can actually move around and now you can go ahead and create your camera and do all those kind of things and you can start texturing and save your animation and then render it so that's basically that okay i hope you guys found this tutorial useful please like share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time